All of the weekly ultimate rewards for Halo Infinite Season 2 have been leaked, and it comes with some very interesting bits of customization. Starfield is delayed because developers didn't want it to be the next cyberpunk. The name of the sequel for Jedi Fallen Order has been revealed. Season 17 for Destiny 2 comes with new content, brand new map, but a big change to Iron Banner, which has a lot of people questioning, and more. So if you want to know everything, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So yes, you heard me correct. All of the weekly ultimate rewards have been leaked out to the internet. So I wanted to kind of go over a few of these with you guys and see like what can we have to offer? Did they actually improve things with season two's weekly ultimates compared to season one, which had a lot of emblems and backdrops and really things that people didn't really care for. And initial look at this list right here of all the weeks up to November 1st, it's all like actual stuff people will be willing to grind for. We have coatings, we have stances, visor colors, and also even extra bits of customization like helmet attachments, chest piece attachments, and things like that. Overall, it's a huge improvement from season one of Halo Infinite's weekly ultimate rewards. We'll take a quick scroll through to kind of see what's available for you guys. Again, if you want to see exactly what section and what kind of stuff is going to be there, just take a pause the video and just kind of look at certain things, what's going to be in this right here. But a lot of really great bits of content that like it's actually going to be things that people are going to want to grind and play for when it comes to your weekly ultimate challenges like we have a warhog skin which looks very unique to that we have a helmet attachment right here for the uh rakshasa armor set also with the sweet like knife blade attachment right there for the chest piece that's really awesome i believe this coating right here looks very similar to like that iron man coating that we had in the store but people might be getting this for free but i think this might be just for the fracture iron eagle core i believe is what they call it as you can see the emblem right here looks very much like a fracture emblem right there so this coating might be just tied to that fracture core so that's one thing uh one thing i saw in here tactical clippy weapon charm which kind of makes me a little upset because I posted this on my community post on the channel here, guys. So if you're subscribed, you would see this. So make sure you tap subscribe to keep yourself up to date with all Halo and gaming news related stuff. But you can see Clippy was like a 300 credit uh, thing within the store. And I thought, why not for the memes and the lols? Why not buy Clippy for like, well, I think it's like equivalent of like $3. It's kind of like whatever. It's just kind of like a fun little addition to the game right there. Um, but now you can get Clippy as a weapon charm. Obviously, it's a little different. It doesn't really have the same kind of feel to it, but still, I kind of wish that like they didn't do that, but it's all right. I mean, it's like whatever kind of thing. But looking through the list right here, it looks like most of this is going to be available for most of the cores, except for like some coatings like this are available for the Mark 7 specifically. But we see a lot of the visors. They don't really mention specifically if they're tied to any kind of core for itself. As we do know, 343 did state that they probably will first do like some attachments and some visors when it comes to cross core customization coming in with season two and supposedly the yapping will be happening in the weeks of september 6th and september 13th and look at that weapon charm the wart weapon charm kind of a play off of uh barack obama's hope poster right the iconic thing right there so this is pretty awesome i definitely would want to grind for something like this we also have the moa burger weapon charm which looks awesome right there as well uh, we got some more codings for the Mark 7, for the Fracture Core. We also have a coding here for the Warhog, which would be kind of, it's probably pink colored in a way, or more kind of like a rose gold, if you want to call it that. But also in the very end, we have another green coloring for Butler, which is like, how many green colorings do we need of our AI characters? So let me know what you think about the weekly ultimate challenge rewards when it comes to season two. To me personally, I think it's a huge step forward. Like we mentioned earlier, that it's not like a bunch of emblems and backdrops and not the same emblem like four times over like we have with season one. This looks like actual content you're going to want to grind for. Some of the stuff like that knife chest for the chest piece attachment, that looks awesome. And also don't forget throughout the season, we'll also have events with its free bits of customization to unlock as well. So we're gonna get some more free stuff for you guys to play around with in season two. As soon as we get some more information about those upcoming seasons, I guarantee I'll let you guys know here on the channel. Now, if you guys saw my last video, we talked about the delay that's happened to Starfield and Redfall, where basically they decided they want to put more polish to make the game the best version it possibly can. Very similar to what we heard from the development of Halo Infinite. And we actually have some more insights from a known credible leaker, Jason Schreier, talks about how the Bethesda was afraid that it would be the next cyberpunk for Starfield. Jason Schreier states that last spring before E3, I spoke with some folks at Starfield 
who were extremely worried about committing to the November 11th, 2022 date based on the progress they made so far. Next, Cyberpunk was the term floated around. That's within the teams, dude. That's concerning, really concerning about uh, Starfield here, saying good on Bethesda for delaying even after announcing the specific date. Which, need I remind you how buggy the release of Cyberpunk 2077 was. I mean, I was super excited about this game, but when people started playing it, when I started playing it things started looking well kind of weird and not really playing out as they should the game didn't really get advertised the way it should have been and like you see like this weird stuff happening here in the game where like these random like little bugs like this throughout cyberpunk 2077 really ruined the experience of the game and i can see right here this player is like upside down in the floor right there this person just like punching some walls right here which like why is this like not look at look at look at this weird stuff that's happening then like you think this won't happen in a Bethesda game? Bethesda games are kind of known for being kind of buggy and glitchy releases, but like in a much more fun kind of way that they're kind of buggy and glitchy. Uh, but this was like straight up kind of broken stuff. And if they were afraid that Starfield would be the next Cyberpunk, then yeah, absolutely needs to be delayed till first half of 2023. Now we don't know exactly when the release will happen. I still expect to see full uh, gameplay reveals when it comes to Starfield this next month when it comes to the E3 time frame. Obviously, E3 is not happening this year, but I'm sure we'll see something gameplay related since it's the Xbox and Bethesda showcase. So we'll take, keep it a close eye on that. I'll let you guys know as soon as we get some more concrete information about Starfield. Now, if I'm sure a lot of you guys remember this game, Jedi Fallen Order, it was one of the best Star Wars games I personally had ever played. I think the st the gameplay of it was absolutely fantastic. The atmosphere, it just totally captured Star Wars in a really amazing way. Plus, if you guys never finished this game, like it took me a while to finish it up, but the ending of this game is absolutely incredible. And we have some news about the sequel that we know that's coming for this game. We at least have the name of the next game. Very credible insider Jeff Grubb, who actually had some Halo Infinite news to be shared on the channel previously, confirmed the name of the next game where someone actually guessed it on this live stream where it says uh, on Twitter here someone replied back saying Star Wars Jedi Survivor is the ne next respawn game huh and he said someone guessed it on Grub Snacks which is his like live stream new gaming news show personally I'm like that's cool that we know the name but the thing is like the name to me doesn't really provide much in the way of how it's different than Fallen Order I always felt like a bit of a Jedi Survivor in Fallen Order where I didn't really come across many other fellow Jedis because it was right after like Order 66 and stuff like that and how the Jedi were basically decimated It'd be quite interesting to see if it's gonna be a continuation of Fallen Order story arc. But I do expect the game to be a continuation of the cast of characters that you had within Fallen Order. And the cool thing about Jedi Fallen Order, it's part of the canon of Star Wars. It's within the timeline. And I would really like to see Respawn continue with the game being part of Star Wars canon with Jedi Survivor being part of canon as well. But we just have to wait until we see more. We might get some information this E3. So I'll keep an eye on the channel, guys. I'll give you guys some more information when it comes around. Next, guys, can we get, just get like some face pump? Palms in the chat or something because Ubisoft again is trying another battle royale. And this is a new mobile battle royale game titled Wild Area Survivors. If you guys remember that they did try battle royale with Hyperscape and the game seemed to be all right. It just wasn't really good enough to compete with a lot of other battle royales out there. So this game right here looks to be kind of like maybe something to try to jump into the mobile sphere to see like maybe they have some success on that. It kind of has a bit of like, honestly like a bit of an X defiant kind of like visual presentation to it, which is kind of weird. But it's like a PVE, PVP kind of mobile battle royale game. I'm like, man, with like 40 players in it, matches the last up to 10 minutes. So it's kind of more like truncated kind of experience for your mobile players out there. Um, maybe they might see some success in this. I think right now, like in the mobile side of things when it comes to a battle royale, uh, all I can think about is, well, we have Apex Legends coming to mobile, which is on May 17th, which you covered previously on the channel. You have Fortnite, and then you also have PUBG. I think Call of Duty is coming out with their Warzone mobile, if I remember correctly. So you already have some heavy hitters going into that platform as well. We'll see what Ubisoft's trying to do. They've kind of flopped quite a bit, and we'll see what happens with this. Now back to the uplifting news that we have for gaming. We have a new they announced for the release of the Dead Space remake, which if you guys don't know, they're remaking the first Dead Space game and they're doing like ground up remake. This isn't just like a simple port over, upgrade the resolutions and textures like we have with Mass Effect. This is like a full on remastering remake and it's gonna be available for you guys to play on January 27th, 2023. 
which if you haven't seen the comparison differences guys it is a massive change since dead space came out in the early 2000s it's widely held as a fan favorite of the horror genre i mean i tried playing this back in the day and honestly it was too spooky for me to play but like the visual fidelity changes and upgrades this game has received the atmosphere is even more spooky even more eerie and i'm, I'm afraid to see what the death animations are going to look like in this game because if you don't remember the death animations for dead space are really freaking brutal and i wonder what that's going to look like when it comes to this upgraded version uh, as soon as we get some more information about this game you know i'll be sharing it here on the channel and to finish out the video for you guys here we have some destiny 2 news season 17 has been announced and we have some new in content coming in with season 2 we have some new updates to the games like iron banner game a really interesting change which i'm not super into and a brand new map that interesting change for Iron Banner is that they are removing power levels. They are disabling it for Iron Banner, which I'm like, they did this back when Destiny 2 first launched and the community hated it. Then they reverted back to having the power levels on. They've had it on for years now and people seem to really enjoy it, but now they've taken it off. We'll see what happens. I mean, I felt like this was like the one rare opportunities where you're in PvP, especially where your power level mattered. You actually got to test out your gear and your best loadout possible. And a big change for Season 17, guys, is that it will no longer be Control for Iron Banner, but it'll be Rift, the return of that mode, which has been years since that mode was in Destiny 2. If, essentially, if you're a Halo fan, you're, you know, like Assault, right? You grab the ball, put it in the enemy score goal. That's how you do it. The reward system is changing for Iron Banner as well within Season 17, saying that Iron Banner tokens will be removed starting Season 17, and those will be replaced with a similar ranking system to Saint 14 and Shaq, so kind of more like a reputation engram kind of thing for season 17 there will only be two weeks of iron banner that'll be week two and week eight we have our first new map coming into destiny 2 for a very long time from the multiplayer side of things called disjunction man we have a fun, nice screenshot of it kind of showcasing the themes and with the visuals of it of course it looks amazing because destiny's art style is amazing it's a symmetrical map with bases on either side three lanes with plenty of crossover and large backfields they said this map is absolutely huge i think they said that might even be the largest map we've seen in destiny 2 for multiplayer side of things and it'll be available for all 6v6 3v3 and free-for-all modes within crucible and of course it will be the iron banner map as well we also see the return of zone control in crucible now we do have control in the game right now but the difference is that with zone control kills don't count towards the score so people actually will focus hopefully on the objective kind of like how your traditional modes like in domination or call of duty or like strongholds in halo infinite it's going to work that way where it's more about capturing the objectives than getting kills season 17 will also see various changes to control elimination mayhem rumble showdown and also gambit reputation as well so there's a lot of minor changes happening with the season 17 update and finally a great feature for all you pve grinders out there grandmaster rejoin is coming with season 17. Bungie states here, conquerors with bad connections. Starting in season 17, you will get air coded out of a non match made nightfall. Any level you will be able to rejoin after logging in. So that's super great to hear for all you PVE grinders. Eververse changes are coming with season 17. I know Eververse has always been very controversial when it comes to Destiny and saying that Eververse changes will be that they are adding a voluntary option for rank purchases. They didn't start in week three, as you know, when the microtransactions hit, they always wait till after the launch of a new bit of content so the reviewers don't trash the game. <laughs> that seems to be the typical kind of uh, process right there. We're saying that you can have 10 ranks bought for 2,000 silver. But let me know in the comment section down below where your thoughts are when it comes to being able to purchase ranks within the Eververse. But if you're new to the channel and missing any content from me recently, check out these playlists right here. I got a link to all my gaming news and informational videos right there for you all to check out. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.